We begin with the Christmas dialogue. The people who walk in the darkness have seen the light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For unto us a child is born, to us a savior is given. May the grace and truth of Christ be with you all. Amen. Would you join together in this morning, this prayer, evening's prayer, prayer of the, of the day. day? Almighty, Almighty God, God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant, Grant that, that on here earth, on earth we, we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the, in the last day wake, wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns, and reigns with you and, you and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. One, One God, God now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Actually, there's supposed to be special music now, I think. I think. <laughs> My script says there's supposed to be special music now. <laughs> mm. What does your script say? <laughs> scripture reading. Oh, yours says scripture reading. All right, well, there you go. Shall I do it? You do now. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 3 and 6 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. O oh Lord, you have multiplied the nation. You have increased the nation's joy. Together we rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born for us, a savior given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of Christmas prophecy. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Okay. Um, we will not gather the offering at this time. What we will ask that as you leave this morning, this, this evening, if you brought a Christmas offering, that you leave that in the offering plates on your way out. But to bless that offering, we will sing together our offering carol. Angels we have heard on high.
The second scripture reading is from Titus 2, 11 to 14. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all inequity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of Christmas hope. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
The Gospel of the Incarnation, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered, enrolled, taxed. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered, and Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with that angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem, Let's go now and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Incarnation. Thanks be to God. Oh, Mary, rock, rock, rock your little baby, rock your child in the stable tonight. So, oh, Mary, rock, rock, rock your little baby, rock your baby in the heavenly light. Oh, Mary, rock.
Christmas blessings to you all. Christmas blessings. That's the power of a baby to change the world. Now most of you, if you have had an experience with a baby in your life, you know that any baby, even earthly ones, basically from the moment of conception change everything. It changes lives around you, it changes your world, it can reach into the neighborhood, into the extended family, and just keep on going. In this case, the blessings of the Christmas baby, Jesus, the, the Christ in human skin and tears, well, they, they're, there are blessings and effect that are eternal and worldwide and, well, maybe even cosmic, changing the universe. Some of you know how. The ancient promises about who the prophecies called the Son of David, the Son of Man, the Son of God. They speak of light and joy and peace and justice and the authority of real truth. Did Jesus birth, did that little baby bring all those gifts to this world? Did that baby long ago keep those prophets' promises? It can. I was reading Adam Russell Taylor recently as he wrote about the potential power of the baby Jesus. He writes, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Isaiah's prophecies of the coming Christ child, a child who would one day be called Prince of Peace. That Prince of Peace would later proclaim in his Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called children of God. Talk about a, a cosmic consequence of a birth. This baby, he writes, calls us to explore how we can pursue peace in our own lives, how we can become better instruments of peace in our communities, in our nation, in our world, in our families. He could have said, Taylor goes on, right now the prospect of peace sometimes feels particularly challenging in light of an ongoing pandemic, rampant violence, and conflicts across the globe. He quotes from the United Nations, the UN Refugee Report from 2020, that noted that there were 80 million people forcibly displaced worldwide as a result of persecution, conflict, violence, or human rights violations. And that was a year ago. Adam Taylor continues, following the Prince of Peace requires not only giving our attention to and praying for an end to the, to the violence, but also playing an active role in peacemaking by using our voices to generate greater social and political will to prevent and end these conflicts. I know that on such a night as this, these words from Mr. Taylor seem too much to tackle. And again this year, maybe you're like me. Last year at this time, we weren't even in this building. So there's some progress, I guess. But maybe you are like me, tired and ready for a long winter's nap. But out in the lawn there is arising such a clatter that maybe we better spring from our beds to see what's the matter. The angelic promises to Mary and the shepherds, the interpretation of what those meant from Titus, are that we need not fear. And they are part of what Christmas blessings mean this year as much as ever. If we would honor the Christ child, even as the shepherds did, could it be that we should allow the Christmas blessing to shape us, to empower us, to make those blessings known just as the shepherds did? And make sure that every child really, really, truly knows the real-life effects of the Christmas blessing. Because of that one baby born in Bethlehem, 
Every child in Appalachia and Africa can now know peace and justice. The Christmas blessing can be real. Because of that one baby born in Palestine, every child in Cloquet, Chicago, and the Congo can feel the power of light and a joy. The Christmas blessing need not only be empty, pretty words. Because of that baby, that one baby born in the Middle East, every child in Esco, Ethiopia, and Ukraine can now know that they need not fear. The Christmas blessing can be real and not just smoke floating from our candles from tonight. Jesus was born to make those blessings real. And if that Christ will be born and born in our hearts, we will believe those blessings are real and in believing, make them real. Consider a bit of a poem for today's world about the power of those blessings. This time of year, we're told to believe. But what does that mean? Judging from the movies, to believe means believe in magic, believe in Santa, believe in romance, to be optimistically wishful and naive. In many Christian circles, to believe means to think as in believing certain doctrines are true, but the word believe comes from an old English rooted in German, belieben, belieben, to love. In Scripture, to believe means to give your heart, to lovingly entrust yourself, not to an idea, but to a person. Steve Garner's Holmes. Tonight. Tonight will bring the touch of that person. That baby, born long ago. The one that did change the world. The baby who can change your life anew tonight. Maybe as you hold the candle, you'll feel his touch in the wax as it warms in your hand. Maybe tonight you will taste his life in the bread and in your own tears. Maybe tonight you will smell his scent in the wine and in the smoke. Or maybe you'll catch only a passing tingle in your soul. He is here for you tonight. He is here to heal you and to heal our world. He is here to touch your pain and banish our conflict. He is love. This baby born, and he is here. And he is changing everything. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices, 
For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, when Christ was born. Oh, night, oh, holy night, oh, night divine. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love. And his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, for the slave is a brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy. In grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, then ever, ever praise we his power and glory evermore proclaim his power and glory evermore proclaim fall fall on your knees oh hear hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, Christ, when Christ was born, O oh, night divine. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our Lord God and thanks. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Son, Jesus Christ, Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light. 
Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, this covenant is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In a moment, the ushers will invite you forward for communion. We'll be serving at four stations. You'll be offered the bread and the wine if you need, gluten-free. Try to find your way to one of the center, center stations. We'll be doing communion continuously. The inner, wine, inner tray, inner ring of each wine tray is grape juice. For those of you who prefer that, you'll be offered the blood of Christ, and we ask that you take your own choice of the, of the wine or the grape juice. As you come forward, the ushers will be helping by inviting you to take a, the candle for the candle lighting par portion of our service. Please pick up your candles from the ushers as you return to your seats. We have battery powered ones for the youngest among us. And also for the youngest among us, we have fish crackers as a reminder of God's love to them. We'll be with you momentarily. Please follow the instructions of your usher.
We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us in these gifts of bread and wine. And we have shared this gift of this feast of love. Strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth, the gospel of light. Thanks be to God.
receive the blessing. May the word that Mary brought birth to birth carry you into new and abundant life. Amen. Amen. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. Amen. Amen. May the word that the angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand. You may rise. Thanks be to God.